Hi everyone, welcome back. We promised we'd take you through some of the flight testing as we go through this 40 hour flight test program on the Hummingbird. And so we're probably gonna put up quite a few videos as we do things, because there's a lot of tweaking going on. I find myself not only having built a helicopter, but now being a test pilot. And as many of you know, I'm you know a 200 hour helicopter pilot. So I'm going at it very, very cautiously. We made some more flights yesterday. You'll see them in the video. I think Carol will cut those into the video here. Managed to, uh, the hovers are turning out much better. Carol remarked it looked like I was in control, whatever that meant. And then uh, I flew down the runway. We have 4,500 foot runway here. So I managed to fly down the runway and get up to about 38 knots. A Little reluctant yet to actually leave the runway. I hope to do that later today. What I wanted to do was actually go through the rigging again one more time, make certain that it's fine-tuned. I say one more time, I think this is the fifth time actually. But I thought I'd share with you what we're doing and why it's so complicated. So if you look here, the primary thing we're doing right now is setting blade angles so that they're kind of matched in the hover, the blades are tracking. And in the hover, the primary way to adjust the blades is through what's called pitch control links here. So you can see this pitch control link as the uh, rotor head uh, moves around, moves this up and down. They're attached to each blade and there's an arm here that adjusts the pitch of the blade as it goes around, right? We got to change the pitch of these blades as they go around the helicopter. The blade going forward requires less angle of attack than the one going backward. And then this one is, uh, as it's aligned with the tail, will do your left and right kind of thing, all right? So that's a quick, in a nutshell, kind of what the blades are doing. It's a little more complicated than that. But anyway, what I'm doing now is we set the uh, control stick, which is the cyclic, in the neutral position. Neutral on this aircraft is eight degrees aft and one degree right. So we've measured that after we leveled the helicopter. And you level the helicopter right here, and I use a digital uh, protractor here, and I got it within one-tenth of a degree right here on, uh, you know, right there, right now it's reading 89, actually it's 90, 89.990, it's flashing. Can you do it on the right, right side? There. I don't know, let's try. Can you get that in there? I don't know, but anyway, yeah, okay. you can see it, 89.8. Good, probably me not home. So anyway, we're within a tenth or two tenths of a degree of vertical there on a digital scale. And then there are multiple measurements to do on the blades, aligned to the left on the helicopter and aligned to the tail. So we're checking that we have enough control both with the collective and then with full aft and forward stick and left and right stick. So it's a constant going back and forth. And the way you adjust the blade angle, if you look right in here, as the pitch link comes down into these rod end bearings, there's little washers in there that you shim it with. So we'll put the protractor here on top of the blade right there with the blade aligned to the left and then the blade aligned right straight down to the tail rotor to take measurements. So we've got all or a little more than what the book specifies as required uh, range of motion. So I'm feeling pretty good about all that. If it feels good today, maybe I'll go around the pattern. So the next and one of the things I've also had, uh, had to tweak a little bit is uh, the collective downforce is quite high on this. It's actually, it gets quite tiring. And the way we fix that is you actually bend the trailing edge of uh, each blade up a little. The blades are made with multiple pockets. I forget how many there are, at least a dozen, because I know I bet the first four. And to do that and to do it very gently, I made this tool. It's basically uh, eighth inch sheet aluminum with a, basically an eighth inch spacer and I just rivet it. And then this can go right on the trailing edge and what we'll do is we'll get a picture of this later, but it goes right on the trailing edge. I'm not gonna bend this one. And then we get a nice simple bend on the trailing edge, all uniform for each pocket. This is actually the width of the individual pockets. And you only come back, you originally were doing three, now you're doing four? Yes, yeah, so we came back three pockets and it wasn't quite enough to get rid of that collective down four. So I came back four pockets and it's really lightened up. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now, this is going to be a bunch of back and forth tweaking because I know some of you are thinking, well, if we're bending the blade tips out there, aren't we changing the tracking? And you're absolutely right. But again, we want to adjust for hover here. And then perhaps this evening, if the weather stays and it's uh, good for us, we're going to put some LED bulbs on the blade tips and then check the hover 
and see how they're tracking. And then for forward flight, where the blades are moving much faster with relative air, if you think about the relative air over the forward moving blade, by adjusting the tips out there, just a minute amount really changes the difference in the blade tracking. So it's gonna be a constant back and forth here between trying to get it right for a hover and then balance that with what airspeed we're gonna primarily fly at. Because as you change the airspeed, the blade tracking is gonna change as well. So anyway, helicopters are complicated. A lot of tweaking, no one-time rigging. It's kind of like having a heavy left wing on an airplane that you're constantly chasing. So, but uh, we'll get there. I'm excited, the engine's running fine. Uh, no problems there. And um, we'll look forward to uh, some more flights. Thanks for watching.